<laughs> it is it is five o'clock and I just want to introduce myself uh, and get started and kind of explain to everyone how things uh, how we plan for things to go and then also ask for your your mercy as some of the folks who are used to how ABA goes sometimes we don't have control over when certain people come and and talk um, so the first thing that I want to do is get the link to the program book put in the chat because we do have a, a program planned. Mm -hmm. And there it is, our wonderful staff, Paula has put it in the chat. Thank you so much. And um, again, welcome everyone. This is the Civil Rights and Social Justice section of the ABA's annual Father Robert Drynan reception. My Angela Scott and I'm the chair of the section and I am going to give you all just a few moments to continue your chatting because I want to wait until maybe about 505 506 to begin but I do want to let you know that we do have a program book and we're going to try to follow it as best as possible so that we can give our honoree the most appropriate celebration that we can under the circumstances um so I will let you continue on with your fellowshipping. <laughs> so to the staff, thank you for everything, Paula, Allie, everyone. And you see, I, I have my plaque. Yes. <laughs> so. Well, since I'm on mood, I'm gonna say congratulations. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Pope, how are you doing? Hey, girl. I'm not as fine as you, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, you are, because you you your, your daughter got married. I saw the beautiful pictures. You remember? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's been there last year. Both of the kids got married. It was yes, a very that good is year. Awesome. So <laughs> the family grew by two, right? Yes, it did. We're very happy. That's awesome. Miss <laughs> yeah. Banks, I see that you've joined. I hadn't seen you in a month of Sundays. Benita, how are you doing? I am doing well and congratulations, Elicia. I had, um, I was tardy in uh, registering for the midwinter meeting yesterday and I discovered that you were being honored. And so I thought, yes, I will be there to extend my uh, congratulations. Just so proud of you and thank you for your leadership. Excellent. Both, both in the ABA as well as our collaborations over the years in the National Bar Association. Thank you so much. You're more than welcome. Thank you for joining. This day is making all of us very happy, Alicia. Oh, Craig. my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, so happy today. It's hey, Will, I think your hair is as long as mine. <laughs> oh, look at Mr. Ocampo. How I haven't had a haircut doing? in a year. Oh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually had my hair three times uh, since the pandemic, but Ray, it goes you fast. cut your hair three times? <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, congratulations, Alicia. I'm, you know, I'm very proud of you, and I'm happy to hear, hear what you got to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. For Alicia, we're here in California, John and Gail, and we're just thrilled for you. Hi, Congratulations. Alicia. How are you both doing? We're doing great. Thank doing you. Great. Excellent. Excellent. Wish we could get out more. I know, right? <laughs> so when well, I time? have long hair too. <laughs> Look, That's I right. have short hair. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only one of us who's got short hair. Right. Well, Judge Nelson joins me. Yes. Judge Nelson. How you doing? Well, you know, you're not judge anymore. You're justice. Let me do it. Justice Let's Nelson. That's right. <laughs> we can all just call her her honor. Her oh, honor. That's right. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. I just cannot <laughs> wait to celebrate you. I'm just so excited about this. Ah, this makes me so excited. Oh, bye, Alicia. Yay. Okay. Hey. Hey, Jody, how are you doing in Oklahoma? Well, it's cold, but you know, I'm ready for us to go back to South Carolina and do our <laughs> famous road trip. Hey, Alicia, hey, congratulations. Good. Thank you, Lauren. How are you We're doing? I'm good. It's so nice to see you. I just wish we could all be together. Yeah, well, you know, we are together. It's just not in the way. <laughs> 
that we're used to. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> I've been following your great work on you, you oh. know, publications. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we're here tonight to honor all your great work. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right. Okay, everybody. Well, we will get started and I will let you know the order uh, that we will proceed. Um, we are going to, first of all, I want to thank you all for being here. Um, again, this is, this is an award ceremony that uh, we have had as a tradition of our section for many years. We have hardworking civil rights and social justice advocates and people who have devoted a significant amount of time to the section. Um, leadership or otherwise. And so Alicia fits that bill many, many, many times over. And this, this award to her tonight is extremely well deserved. Um, I do want to let you know that we are going to also hear today from um, President Trish Rifo and uh, President-elect mm -hmm. Reggie Turner. And so again, I ask you to bear with us because uh, while we do have a run of show and we know what time they're supposed to be there, be here, we've already received notice that they won't be here at that time. So, <laughs> so just bear with us. And um, I will let you know that after um, the formal part of our program is over, there's going to be at least 30 minutes of additional time for folks to fellowship and continue to uh, wish Alicia well. And so with that, I am going to um, turn it over to, to Allie to begin our program. Congratulations, Alicia. This award recognizing your service to the ABA and to the legal profession is long overdue. Soror, we wish you the best and much Delta love. Congratulations, Alicia. We are so honored to be able to give you this award today. I know that you represent so many of the qualities that Father Drynan embodied as well. I remember walking into a section meeting when I was new into the section and seeing you there as chair of the section. Really, you were setting such a great example for all of us. You were so welcoming and inclusive for me and for others. And we really appreciate everything you've done for the section over the years and continue to do as you support our work going forward. Again, congratulations, Alicia. Alicia, it was one of my great pleasures to meet you during my first meeting of the CRSJ Leadership Council. Our then chair, Will Schooley, introduced you, and you began to provide a history of the Black African American experience within the ABA. All that you said was riveting. It has stuck with me. It serves as a guide as I do the work that I have begun to do with CRSJ, state and local governments, and within the international realm of ABA. And I can't thank you enough for uh, the guidance that you've shown. And I truly congratulate you on receiving this prestigious award and I wish you many blessings and all the best going forward. Thank you. Congratulations, Alicia, on receiving the 2021 Father Drynan Award. Your commitment to advancing human rights, civil liberties, and social justice is without question. Through your leadership, you have improved the profession and no doubt touched the lives of countless individuals. It is an honor to celebrate you and to call you my friend. Congratulations. Hello everyone, I am Paula Frederick. I am Georgia State Delegate to the American Bar Association House of Delegates. Elysia is a member of the Georgia delegation and it is on behalf of the Georgia delegation that I wanted to send my greetings and congratulations upon the occasion of Elysia being awarded the 2021 Drynan Award from the Section of Civil Rights and Social Justice. 
I first met Iglesia in 1987 or 88. I was attending my first meeting of the American Bar Association Young Lawyers Division. Alicia was already there. Uh, over the 30 plus years since then, Alicia has served the association with the same vigor, energy, optimism, courage that uh, we all had back there in the young lawyer days. I remember Father Drynan, and I think he would be delighted to see Alicia receive an award that is named after him. Congratulations, Alicia. This is well deserved. We love you, and we look forward to working with you on shared goals of the, the association for 30 more years. Congratulations, Alicia, on winning the 2021 Father Drawing Award. Your long standing commitment to advancing civil rights, civil liberties, and social justice is well known and respected. Your leadership, has touched the lives of many people and made the legal profession better. It is an honor to celebrate you and call you a dear friend. Congratulations. My name is Erica Levine Powers. I am uh, the current chair of the ABA section of state and local government law. We share Alicia with civil rights and social justice. Um, we honored her with our Jefferson Fordham Award in 2019, which is an advocacy award not unlike the Drynan. I want to thank Alicia for a moment we have never discussed that um, when we were in Savannah planning a conference that sadly ultimately got rained out. Okay, what happened? Hmm? I don't think so. Not sure what's going on. <laughs> Sorry, hold on one second. It got rained out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, technology. Hello, Alicia. I can tell you what happened. Uh, <laughs> Alicia and I were planning a conference and uh, love, been there to help others um, find their way to. And I'm one of those. Everybody's been mentored by you, it feels like, in some way or another. And I'm blessed to have been one of them. Um, you are so deserving of this honor. Uh, I'm thrilled to play a small role in thanking you and honoring you for what you have done for this association, for our profession, and for lots of folks just like me who need to be reminded to be more like Alicia Frazier. So with lots of love in my heart and congratulations to you, um, I cheer this honor and look forward to when we get a chance to drink a toast in person uh, again. Congratulations. Thank you, Trish. And now we will hear from Reggie. I have not seen him yet, but is he on yet? I'm clicking through, forgive me, 101 guests here, so. <laughs> So I don't think that he is on yet. And um, I did hear that Judy Perry Martinez was gonna try to join us as well. Is she here? I am, I am, but okay. I'll, I'll um, Alicia knows how I feel about her. And I had the wonderful opportunity to say something on the, the tape, um, but you are just extraordinary and a dear, dear friend uh, for, I don't wanna say what, three and a half decades, three decades. So um, congratulations, thank you. Thank you, Judy. And for those of you who don't know, Judy is the immediate past president of the American Bar Association. So we appreciate your work and your support of the section over the years. And we definitely support, uh, appreciate your support of Alicia here today. So thank you. Uh, so what we will do is go into um, the, the second video tribute, and then we will uh, turn it over to Vice President, Vice President. Reggie Turner. 
Hello, I'm Judge Bernice Donald, and it's my honor to congratulate C. Alicia Frazier on becoming the 2021 winner of the Father Dryman Award. Alicia epitomizes the life and work of Father Dryman. She's a passionate leader, advocate, lawyer, friend, and humanitarian. When I think of Alicia, I think of the words of Michelle Obama, who said that success is not about the amount of money that you make, but it's about the difference that you make in others' lives. Alicia has made a difference in the lives of so many, and certainly in the life and work of this organization. Congratulations, Alicia, on a life well lived and an award well deserved. Alicia, congratulations on the great honor of receiving the Civil Rights and Social Justice Section's Father Drynan Award. Uh, Father Drynan was a person of great integrity and wisdom and principle, somebody who uh, everybody watching this certainly aspires to. Uh, you had the opportunity during your year as chair to present this award uh, to Roy Hammer, who was um, one of the uh, financial and spiritual and intellectual uh, leaders of the section in the fine tradition of this award. Uh, it's really important uh, that our section have the service of great chairs uh, during the course of your year, uh, you also were able to present the uh, Thurgood Marshall Award uh, to Elaine Jones, uh, the first woman uh, to lead the uh, NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Uh, again, a person of uh, you know just just great character and skill and importance, and um, you know you have been able to be at these great moments of our history, and uh, it's all summed up in. Uh, the uh, award being given you today. So um, uh, I hope that you are quite proud of it and congratulations on receipt of the uh, section's Father Drynan Award. Hello, my name is Miles Link and I'm delighted and honored to be able to give a short video tribute to Alicia Frazier. I remember when Alicia was chair of the section and she held her uh, spring meeting in uh, Memphis, uh, Tennessee, and it was a wonderful, wonderful meeting. And I remember visiting the Civil Rights Museum, and I just remember all of the wonderful leadership opportunities she provided to people of color to address issues affecting people of color when she chaired the section. I also appreciated her incredible mentorship to many in the section, including myself. I remember sitting down with her for lunch one day in New York during an ABA annual meeting, and she mapped out for me uh, how I might become chair of the section one day, and I was able to do that. Alicia has been a wonderful friend, a wonderful leader, a wonderful mentor, and a wonderful model to so many people in the ABA and throughout her professional career and personal life. And she is a wonderful recipient of the Father Drynan Award for all that she has contributed to our section. Congratulations, Alicia, and thank you for being a part of our section. You, by your presence, lend status and stature to what we do. Thank you. Hi, my name is Natalyn Archibong. I'm a member of the Atlanta City Council and the State Bar of Georgia. I know from experience that Alicia epitomizes an excellent public sector attorney. She is passionate about the law, maintains a high level of ethics and integrity, and is a mentor to many young attorneys. Her candor, her wit, and her outstanding legal skills make her a true treasure. This is a fitting honor for a woman who works so tirelessly for our city and the profession. Congratulations, Alicia. Alicia, congratulations. It is wonderful that you are being honored with the Father Drynan Award. Your life exemplifies selflessness and always putting others before yourself and always giving back. It is a part of your fabric. And I'm so happy that you have been recognized for the beautiful person you are. Again, congratulations and much love. Hi, Alicia. It's Richard Soden calling in to wish you a 
hearty congratulations on your father dying an award. Uh, you know, I really would have thought they would have given this to you before. Uh, so well deserved and your leadership throughout the ABA on matters of civil rights and social justice is legendary and I am happy to be amongst those uh, able to uh, be present and to uh, uh, offer you my congratulations on this great achievement. Hope to see you soon. Bye. Almost live from New York, it's Ron Tabak to congratulate Alicia Frazier on getting the Father Grant Award for 2021. No one deserves it more. She was a tremendous section delegate. She was a great section leader, and she still is a force to be reckoned with in the ABA and in general. The only difficulty about Alicia is that although she's a great baseball fan, she doesn't root for the correct team, but that's what bowl games are about. So I look forward to seeing you in person, uh, not just virtually, at future ABA events. Congratulations again. This is Steve Wormiel, and I want to congratulate Alicia Frazier for uh, winning the well-deserved Father Drynan Award. Um, Alicia, you are a force of nature. Um, you have been so wonderful and helpful and supportive to so many people, uh, including me, uh, when I first served on an ABA committee. Uh, you were the chair of the standing committee on um, strategic communication, um, which I was a member of, and you showed me the ropes and taught me what to do and have uh, been helpful and supportive ever since then. And so I really can't think of a better person to be honored with the Father Drynan Award, and congratulations. Hello all, this is Walter White coming to you from a very rainy and a very quarantined London, England. It is my true joy to share in the appreciation of the recognition of Elysia Frazier for the Father Drynan Award. Elysia, this is a very due recognition and award for your extraordinary contributions to the section as well as to the American Bar Association as a whole. I'm proud of you, my friend, and thank you for your so many contributions. Ms. C. Alicia Frazier and I have known one another a long time since our young lawyer days. Blessedly, Alicia is one of those rare lambent souls whose friendship only deepens and enriches with time, like a fine wine. Or, in the case of Alicia and me, like the cocktail for which we have a particular fondness, a sidecar. Here's to you, Alicia. Alicia is a mighty human. Bold and courageous, both in her daring and in her caring. Justice matters to Alicia. People matter to Alicia. And when something matters to Alicia, she is fierce and indomitable in making matters right. That's why she's a heroine, both in life and in our section trailblazing heroines, sometimes ruffle feathers. And I think Alicia is one of the most underappreciated of our extraordinary section heroes. So it's tremendously gratifying to me personally that we are recognizing Alicia today. You know, I'm proud, very proud, our current chair, Angela Scott, for many reasons. But choosing to honor Alicia with the Father Drynan Award is at the top of the list. I love you, Alicia. Alicia, my soror, my mentor, and my dear friend, it is with admiration and sincere appreciation that I congratulate you today 
on being the first African-American woman to receive the Father Drinan Award. I first met you years ago when I served as the Young Lawyer Division Liaison to IRR. You welcomed me with open arms and put me right to work. At the time, I had a full plate. I was still very new to the ABA, and I probably would have preferred a more behind the scenes role, but you would not take no for an answer, and now I understand why. You appointed me co-chair of the Civil Rights and Equal Opportunity Committee, and under your leadership, I made myself at home in CRSJ and never looked back. Often, when we talk about inclusion, all that is needed is a meaningful opportunity. A wise woman once said, diversity is being invited to the party, inclusion is being asked to dance. I remain grateful that you believed in me enough to ask me to dance. This year, we have so many new members and I've appointed talented and diverse section leaders who have really dived in and got to work. I'm walking the path that you paved. I can only hope that I am able to provide them with the same warm and welcoming experience that you provided me so many years ago. Your inspiration continues to make a difference even beyond your awareness. I know all of the work you have done, out front and behind the scenes. I know how hard you advocate for diversity, equity, and inclusion, and how much you are a champion for civil rights and equal opportunity, even when no one is watching. I know how committed you are to the section, and I know how much the section means to you. On behalf of the section, I am pleased to be able to show you just how much you mean to us by presenting you with this well-deserved and long overdue recognition. Congratulations, Alicia, on being the 2021 Father Robert F. Drinan Award recipient. Once again, <laughs> I want to thank everyone who, who took the time to send in a video tribute. And those of you who didn't, we will have time after, after the program to, to wish Alicia well. I am told that our president-elect, Reggie Turner, is here. And so I do want to turn it over to him to give him the opportunity to, to give his remarks as well. We can barely hear him. I'm sorry. Uh, Speak up, Reggie. We can't hear you. Okay. Sure. All right. Hey, sorry about that. That's okay. All right. Speak up a bit. Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, <laughs> opportunity uh, to, to speak um, with you about the the Drinan Awards, and particularly um, our very, very deserving recipient, Alicia Fraser. She is uh, just a, a wonderful, wonderful colleague in the American Bar Association. Uh, I have worked with her on uh, diversity and inclusion issues. I've worked with her on access to justice issues, and she's always had her heart in the right place, um, her, her, her mind uh, in, in the right way of uh, of creating new ideas to enhance the work uh, and then actually getting to the work and getting it done. And uh, so I've been proud to be her colleague for, for many, many years. And as evident by the host of tributes and the kind words shared, uh, it's clear that I'm not the only one. Alicia has touched the lives of, of so many people in the bar and in the community in very positive ways. And I know she'll continue to do that. Um, and, this, and I hope that she will enjoy uh, having this award of recognition and, um, and just have an opportunity to, to be uh, with her friends this evening and uh, colleagues this evening to, to uh, celebrate Father Drinan, who, who I had the, uh, the privilege of, of meeting a few times as a young lawyer. And 
and uh, uh, he was uh, just a remarkable human being who um, who was um, of course uh, deeply deeply um, uh, engaged in work to uh, support the least of these so to speak and uh, and, and as you know we uh, in our profession um, have a, an oath that we take in which we we pledge that we shall never reject from any consideration personal to ourselves the cause of the defenseless or oppressed or delay anyone's cause for lucre or malice. Uh, Alicia lives up to that. Thank you all very much for honoring her and thank you for giving me a few moments. Thank you so much, Reggie, for being here to, to express your appreciation of Alicia with all of us. And we look forward as a section, we thank you as a section for always supporting us. And we look forward to working with you during your, your presidency. So thank you. Okay, well, I am now going to turn over our program to our honoree, C. Alicia Frazier. Before I do that, I just want to reiterate how well-deserved this award in honor is for her. As you have heard, she has touched so many lives and she has done so much. And she, she lives what she advocates for. And so you see her on the front lines advocating for equal opportunity and civil rights, but understand that she also is doing the same thing behind the scenes. And also understand that she's a public servant. And so if you look in the program book at her bio, which I'm not going to read, you all have access to it. You see that most of her jobs have been in public service. And so to imagine that, you know, she's not working at a big firm with a lot of assistance and all of that kind of stuff, yet she's still giving her time and her contributions to the American Bar Association. And that's a big deal. She's working full time and she's still serving in her spare time. And we appreciate it. And we hope you know how much we appreciate it, Alicia. So it is with all pleasure and honor that I am able to present this award to you today. Um, I can't see you, so let me try to fix my screen so that I can. Alicia, can you, there you are, okay. <laughs> okay, Alicia, I think you know how much you mean to me and how much I appreciate everything that you have done for me, for others, for the section. Um, and, and it is with great pleasure that I present this award to you. So I'm going to read it. I'm just so sad I can't be there with you to give it to you. But it states, and it's right behind you, I see. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, yes. And it states, to C. Alicia Frazier for her dedicated leadership and extraordinary commitment to the advancement of social justice, equality, and civil liberties within the legal profession. In recognition of her distinguished service to the section and the profession and advancing civil and human rights for all, it is with great respect and affection that the section of civil rights and social justice presents the Father F. Drynan Distinguished Service Award to C. Alicia Frazier this 19th day of February, 2020. Alicia, congratulations. Thank you so much. And am I on? Am I on? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. So we have our own version of can you hear me these days, right? <laughs> um, thank you so much, Angela, for taking this time to honor me and uh, for selecting me as the 2021 Father Drynan Awardee. Uh, you know it means so much to me for you to be the person to have um, selected 
uh, me and to present this award to me. Um, as much as I mean to you, you mean more to me. Uh, to see you striving and to have the section focusing um, the way you have, it's just been tremendous. And just to see you watch, to watch you grow and develop over the years, um, it does my heart proud, it really does. Um, I thank everybody who has, has joined us this evening, everyone who took the time to send me cards and gifts and acknowledge this, this award on my behalf, took the time to make the videos. But I, I want to share with you, um, many of you don't know my story, but how I came to sit here today. So um, my path to advocacy and inclusion um, probably has always been with me, but um, mostly pronounced my junior year in college because that was the time that my mother was able to buy her first house. The family that she worked for gave her the deposit, uh, not the deposit, but the, um, the um, payment to, the, to, to make on the house, the 20%, because they felt like she should you know, have a piece of the American dream because she worked so hard. And she did so much for so many people and um, as we went to the closing table, so they got her a realtor, they gave her the money. I mean, like all these things. And so, you know, we're out and we finally get to the closing table. And um, my mother said, I don't understand this. I, I don't know what's going on. I, I, I don't want to do this. It's not right. And um, the realtor was like, no, no, everything's all right. And she said, you know, I don't understand these papers. I don't know what I'm signing. And she turned to me and she was like, you're in college, read them and tell me, is this right? And I picked up the papers and, you know, you know how you are when you're young. You know, I think I'm pretty smart. And I read the papers and I don't know, Jack. I, I, I don't know what a fee simple is. And, and I'm like, I don't know what's going on either. And my mother wanted to get up and walk away. And the realtor and my uh, not so smart self who thought she was smart, convinced her to go ahead and close the transaction. And it was the most disastrous transaction. This happened in the, in the early 80s, uh, mid 80s, because this was 1982, I think. And um, uh, for those of us old enough to remember those times, Ronald Reagan was still president. The interest rates were in the teens, if, if you guys can believe it. A lot of you have lived and never seen interest rates that high. But you, most of you have mortgages. So you know if you have a mortgage rate in the teens, that that's an unattainable goal for most people who um, you know, work in you know, hand to mouth. And so what ended up happening is my mother um, assumed a loan. Um, it was a starter house and the couple that had the house uh, had an arm. We didn't know what an arm was. And it was at the end of their arm. And so they got out of it by selling it with those interest rates. And it was a monthly adjusting arm. And so if you can imagine being on a fixed income and not a very high income, a kid in college, and every month your mortgage is go, just going up and up and up. And it was, it, it, it was the worst thing that ever happened to her. And unfortunately, she, she died, you know, not even being able to resolve that issue. Um, and so, you know, when in the the late uh, 2000s, when um, the subprime um, issue came to light and hit most of America, what I knew then uh, was that uh, most poor people and people of color have been under that type of um, dealing always. It had always had been the issue. And so that day when we learned what had happened to us, I vowed to myself that no one like my mother would ever have to 
suffer from that because of lack of a knowledge. That was the time that I learned that knowledge was power. When you know how to navigate the system, you're, you're okay, but most people don't know how to navigate the system. And so um, people tell me, I run into people that I went to elementary school with and they were like, I'm not surprised you're a lawyer. They, you always said you were gonna be a lawyer. I have no concept of that. I thought the time that I decided to be a lawyer was when I realized what happened to my mother. And I just didn't want anybody else like her um, to experience that kind of heartbreaking pain after you finally had that opportunity to get a piece of the American dream and it crumbled right in your face. And she died with that never being resolved. And so while I graduated from law school, knew that, um, and so as a result of that, I ended up um, having an interest in real estate. I was going to conquer real estate like nobody could believe. Now, my current boss, Nina Hickson, says that I'm stubborn, and it is true. Everybody knows I'm stubborn. Um, but in that sense, you know, it paid off. So I decided I was going to be a real estate lawyer, uh, come heck of high water. And that's what I did. And I went to Lincoln Financial Group and started my career as a dirt lawyer. But always, everywhere I've ever been, I always volunteer two places, legal services and something to do with kids. Most times it was some type of one-on-one uh, -on -one with kids, you know, because like me, um, growing up, there was always someone there to help me understand that tomorrow could be a better day and that it was within my power to have a better day. The worst thing, as we all know, um, is to walk around and not be able to feel like tomorrow would, would be different. And so I try to always um, mentor kids and always try to give back to, as um, President-elect Turner said, to the least of these, because it is so incredibly important that um, those of us who have knowledge, we are obligated to pass it on and to make life better for others. That is why so many, I, I, I didn't know that I had impacted people as personally as they have attested to in those beautiful video trip tributes, but that's why I do it. I do it because the knowledge that I have, if you want something, I'm gonna show you how to get it if I know how to get it. That's why I never ever, the 30 something years that I've been in the ABA when people said, hey, I wanna do this, I'm gonna sit down and show you how to do it. Because if that's what you wanna do it and you wanna put the work to it, I wanna show you the best way to get to it. And I, I try to do that uh, with my friends, with my family. My aunt said to me, and I know she's on the call because I saw her earlier. She said to me, um, you, just, you just help everybody. You, you, you'll get everybody jobs. Well, yes, if I can, if I can help you, if there's a helping hand that I can give, I'm going to extend it because guess what? People extended it to me. Um, I grew up um, one of those kids on the other side of the tracks, but I get to sit here today as a lawyer because the family that my mother worked for, the Mahoney's, um, they were part of, of the, um, the Cox family, um, heirs to um, lots of things in Atlanta and the Seelix. Um, they felt that um, irrespective of the fact that my mother, who if you knew my mother and there are a lot of course my family is on and so they know what a, a, a treasure my mother was. Uh, my mother was a cook extraordinaire and uh, she traveled all over the world cooking for people and making people feel good about eating. But um, my mother had three kids and struggled. You know, she was the original Haymon from uh, In Living Cover Color. You remember the 
uh, Jamaican guy who worked like 25 jobs. My mother worked all the time, but they felt like uh, her kids should have access to a very good education. So they, they paid for us to go to private school. And that made the difference because it gave me a foundation for a good education. We subsequently came out and, and went to public schools, but I had such a solid foundation that all those poor schools that I went to after that couldn't eradicate the fact that I had been given that solid foundation. They didn't owe that to me. They didn't owe that to my brothers. They didn't owe that to my mother, but they felt like we should have a chance. And um, so I'm always cognizant of the fact that people gave me a chance and I wanna give others a chance to do whatever it is that they want to do. So um, I am especially proud to be the um, 21, um, 2021 recipient of the Father Drying Award um, because um, I did get a chance to sit down with Father Drying on a number of occasions and to be all inspired. I never thought that my life would be one that um, impacted people in any way. And I you know, still don't feel that. I, my heart is full by watching those videos of the tr tributes uh, that you made because I, you know, I never really view myself that way. I just think that what, what I do is, you know, what we're expected to do. And um, if, if, if any of you, uh, most of you who are uh, been members of the House of Delegates, you know that uh, for years, the House had one delegate. And um, at one point before Walter White and Estelle Rogers, uh, I succeeded them in being that one delegate. And for those of you who, who've been active in the House, you know that the section uh, at that time of individual rights and responsibilities, now civil rights and social justice, uh, that section uh, was always putting forth recommendations for the House. And we, we just worked and worked and worked, you know. Um, but even though you would have one delegate, there were so many of you in the house who supported us. But one of the things that I really learned from um, Mark Agras, who was, uh, he preceded me um, by a number of years as chair of the House of Delegates, but uh, Mark taught me and helped me uh, really figure out how to work on behalf of the sections. And one of the things that I'm, I'm most proud of for the section is getting that second delegate for the section. Uh, proud of it, one, because it spared me some, you know, from having to always be at the podium, but most proud because he gave us the true representation that we needed. We always talk about the section being the, the conscience of the ABA. And it, it was true yesterday, it was true to, it's true today, and it will be true tomorrow. But, um, one of the things that um, we do know is we don't get here by ourselves. Um, we get here by our family. And before I talk about family, I want to, uh, I'm so remiss um, having only thank Angela, but I want to most um, heartedly uh, thank um, Paula Shapiro. Shapiro. Uh, I'm sorry, Shapiro, I'm thinking about Judge Shapiro. Uh, Paula Shapiro, who is the section director for the um, section of civil rights and social, social justice, and Ali, um, and Ali, I don't want to butcher your name, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Killsguard, but I know that's not right. But at any rate, I appreciate all that you guys did and the rest of the staff to make this day a special day for me and what you guys do always. Because the one thing that I do know is that um, since I came into the ABA, it was the staff who shaped me and made me the lawyer that I am, starting with my dear sister, Janet Jackson, who at the time was the assistant director for the section of ABA, I mean, the section of young, the Young Lawyers Division, I'm sorry. And Janet said some things to me that always stuck with me um, about um, not recognizing 
the power that you have and you have to stand um, and reach for things that you don't think belongs to you. And that takes me to my dear friend, Judy Perry Martinez and Pamela Roberts. Um, they both um, said to me, what are you going to do next in the ABA? And I was like, I don't know, you know, I'll probably run for, you know, speaker, clerk, and, and then that position goes to speaker because I, you know, I like the legislative process. And Judy looked at me and she said, no, you're not. You're going to be on the ABA Board of Governors. And I said, I looked at her and I said, no, Judy, I'm not going to do that. That's the white guy's seat. And, and I actually, I said, that's the Southern white guy's seat because they had had a woman that preceded us, uh, Hillary Bass. But other than that, it had only been Southern white boys. And Judy said, yes, you are. Pamela gave me my very first appointment, didn't even know me. She gave me the, an appointment to the ABA section, uh, uh, Young Lawyers Division. And um, that started my path in the ABA. And she did that on the recommendation of a friend. And so I thank both of them. Um, I, um, I go back to family to say that you don't get here by yourself. Uh, you get here by your family and family are threefold, you know, right? You, you have your blood family, and I'm going to take a moment and talk about that in a moment. But then you have your work family, and then you have the family that you select for yourself. And so let me start with my family, my, my blood family. I see my dear cousin, Melissa Okarai on the line. I see my cousins, Mary Jones and her husband, Larry Covington on the line. Um, I see, I don't see my aunt because I, I only see six people in, uh, but I know my aunt, uh, Mary Jackson, and her daughter, Adrienne Parrish, are <clears throat> on the call, I think. And um, those are the people who, from the very beginning, you know, got me to where I am, uh, all the way to the point that when I decided to go to law school, my dear cousin, Mary Jones, who is also a lawyer and who was a young lawyer at the time in DC, living her life, her best life. And um, I, had, I only applied to one law school and it was Howard University because I know I wanted to go. Some of the giants in civil rights were still teaching at the law school. And I'm like, I'm going there to sit at their feet. And when I realized how much it costs to go to law school, um, I said to my mom, I'm gonna have to work a little bit and get some money up and I'll go, I'll see if I can defer my admission. And my cousin Mary called me and she said, if you bring a car, I'll take care of everything else. And that she did. And so some of you have heard this funny story. I'm not gonna tell the story, but maybe afterwards um, or when we're ever, ever able ever able to meet again in person, it'll be one of the funny stories, you know, we tell over drinks or over dinner. But um, on, uh, my cousin is born, her birthday is December 25th. And her husband who is sitting there with her, Larry Covington had proposed to her and they were going to have uh, their anniversary, I mean, their uh, um, celebration of their engagement um, sometime uh, leading up to her birthday. And she let me live with her. I lived with her my entire first year. Um, she took care of everything, including buying my clothes. And um, I was studying for the, um, the first semester exams. And um, I came home about two or three o'clock in the morning with my, my study group. And the first exam that I was gonna ever have in law school was torts. And my study group, we had studied, you know, and I really should have just come home and gone to sleep, but I thought, well, let me just drill a little bit more in. And I decided I would put some water on to boil, a, a, a boil some water so I could make some tea. Needless to say that I um, set the condo on fire and um, created all this damage and ruined their plans for their party. And we can talk about the details later, but anyway, so, you know, your family, your blood family, they take you however they get you, you know, and um, 
And so, you know, there are a lot of funny stories that I can tell about, you know, my auntie, you know, a lot of people know or don't know that uh, I used to be definitely afraid of water. And uh, my mom tricked my auntie into wash, trying to wash my hair one day. And she got, <laughs> she was like, I forgot this fool is afraid of water because I nearly destroyed her house. Uh, so we just have a lot of good moments, you know, as family. And that's the stuff that really just, just grounds you, right? Now I'll tell one other story about family. Uh, people know that um, in the ABA, we go everywhere, or uh, we used to. And uh, one time we had a mid-year meeting in Utah, but everywhere I went, I always had family somewhere. And we were taught you connect with your family, right? And so when we went to Salt Lake City, people said, you want to go to dinner? I was like, no, I, you know, my cousin's going to come and get me. And they were like, at least, you know, don't go where you don't have a cousin in Salt Lake City, Utah. And I was like, yes, I do. They were like, everywhere you go, you have some family. How much family do you have? I was like, I have family and I, I connect with my family. And so they stood in the driveway to make sure that some family came to pick me up, take dinner. And there my cousin was driving up with his daughter to come pick me up. And they were like, girl, this is unbelievable. You have family everywhere. So um, that's my blood family. You know, you know, I love you guys and you know that I would not be here today, but for you in every way. Um, so the second family we talk about is, is our work family. And my work family has always supported my ABA activities. From my very first job with Lincoln Financial Group, um, they supported me like no one would believe. They gave me time off. They paid for my um, um, involvement in the ABA. They really supported me. And I always will appreciate um, Jack Hunter, who was the general counsel the entire time I was there for his support. And what was so tremendous about it is um, Jack hated the ABA. He couldn't stand the ABA, but he was like, Alicia, if this is what you want to do, I'm going to support it because guess what? You come back, you've come back a better lawyer. You know, I don't know what they show you in the ABA, but your clients talk about what you have given them since you've been doing that ABA stuff. He hated the ABA. And then I went to um, International Paper and the general counsel there while I was there was Mara Smith and they supported my activities the whole time, paid for it, the time that I took to do the work. And then when I went to Kaplan Higher Education, um, um, my, um, my general counsel there was uh, also very supportive of my ABA activity. And, um, and, and those families, those work families are people that you treasure like you wouldn't believe. You know, you spend more time with your work flat family than you do your own family um, uh, lots of times. So my current family, the members of the Department of Law for the city of Atlanta, and I know Ms. Hickson, uh, we're, we're led ably by Nina Hickson, who is the city attorney. And I, 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 I am not looking at a, um, to see, but I think uh, some of my other colleagues are um, on, the, on the call as well. But um, I appreciate everything that you guys provide to me as a member of your work family. But the thing that was most amazing to me that really ever happened in my life um, when um, it was announced in December that I would be the awardee for um, the Father Drowning Award, uh, my work family, my current work family, uh, they celebrated me. So listen, I already got celebrated for this award in a major way. It was a surprise. And uh, to this day, it still fills my heart. And um, I'm going to show you the award that they made up for me <laughs> for, um, for that. And um, they had some similar tribu tributes and made poems and sung songs. And, and it just filled my heart with joy because, you know, um, actually that week, unbeknownst to them, I was having a hard time. I was having a hard week. And that surprise really just, it just took me on. So, it, 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 it is the best to work under the leadership of someone who 
um, is as smart as Ms. Hickson is, is as compassionate as she is, and is as protective as she is um, of her staff. And so I want to publicly thank you, Nina Hickson, and the members of um, my uh, Department of Law family for the City of Atlanta's Department of Law. You are the best. And thank you for all that you do and for putting up with me, including all my stubbornness. <laughs> so the third family that I'd like to get to um, are it's the family that we create, you know, that we make for ourselves. And so um, two of my family members, uh, my sisters from uh, other parents, uh, Allison Nelson and uh, Philippa Tibbs Ellis, call me Miss Tibbs. <laughs> Those are my sisters. Uh, we have, um, they actually were on that celebration that my work did for me. You know, they surprised me, as did my family members on that one as well. Um, but, you know, we, we do a lot together. And we uphold each other uh, when it's, you know, in times of joy and times of sadness and everything in between. That is very similar to my Black Girl Magic group. They know who they are. Uh, we have supported each other in the ABA. And um, I have your, your, your beautiful um, present that you sent me today. I will be enjoying that. Um, I start to pop the, the champagne and, and uh, drink it while uh, we were having this uh, ceremony, but I didn't, but thank you for the gift. It was received and well appreciated. Um, you know, my sister, my big sister that I never had, um, Judge Bernice Donna is the person who um, keeps me grounded. Um, but I see some people on this call that, um, that I really want to give, um, uh, public thanks to. Um, one of them is Jim Sikonet. Jim, from the time I was a baby lawyer, I mean, I, I don't know what Jim saw in me, but Jim believed in me when I didn't even know how to believe in me. And he has always, never a moment, you know, that he hasn't taken to try to make sure that I was okay, even when I've disappointed him greatly. He has remained my friend, uh, my biggest um, cheerleader, and I appreciate you for that, Jim. I really do. Um, I see uh, Judge Lorraine Arkfield on the line. And Judge, you know we have had some times together. <laughs> I haven't gotten a chance to come and uh, Wesley, thank you for the congratulations and congratulations to you. Wesley is Ms. Hickson's daughter. Um, but I haven't had the opportunity to come visit you in your Paris uh, abode, but I'm looking forward to the time when we can travel and I can meet up with you in uh, Paris and uh, we can continue our laughter. You have always been extremely important to me and a person that I can have just great fun with. Um, um, Adrian Dudley and um, I don't know if um, Robin Mitchell is on this call. We, we were on the ABA Board of Governors together and um, we had uh, such great times and remained very, very great friends. Um, and thank you for your years of support um, and um, belief in me. I see the, the um, I don't even know how to describe you, but uh, Neil Sonnet, I've always admired the work that you have done on behalf of your clients, on behalf of the section um, of um, in, um, civil rights and social justice, as well as the criminal justice section. Uh, your mind, like Mark uh, Agras's mind, amazes me. You know, I was always the one who would go up and, and, and present the resolutions where you were the guys who really knew how to draft them and how to craft, you know, and edit them on the fly. I didn't learn much from you because I didn't care that much for that part of it. Um, but I always admired what you, what you um, put together uh, and helping advance the causes for the section. And I appreciate 
how you have um, um, uh, continued to, you know, do your work in the house. Um, Judge Carolee Neville, you know, we cross times on the board together. You've always been extremely supportive of me and, um, and I appreciate you. Um, uh, you're always the first to congratulate me or to um, encourage me to do the next thing. And I appreciate that. My brother Tom Boat, what's going on? <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you so much for all of that, uh, that you do. Um, uh, I wanna just now take some time to talk about how much Will Schooley means to me. Um, Will Schooley um, became the chair of um, the section at a time that the section was at a crossroads. And um, Will with his conviction and his belief and what is right brought this section to where it is today. And um, there could be no better champion that for the causes than uh, Will Schooley. And I love when I come to San Diego and you come pick me up in the Thunderbird and we go cruising to get our sidecars and have a good meal. And I love you, your wife and your lovely daughters. Uh, thank you for all the support that you that you give. I know you know the 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 problem that you have, Roxanne Green. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, that's my dear friend's daughter. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just looking at the at the gallery and seeing people I hadn't seen in a long time. But um, I I don't want to belabor this, but I do want to end with. Um, you know, what I've, what I've learned in recent years, um, the last couple of years to be um, um, frank about it. And one of the things that, um, that um, what we do is really centered around the commandment that we were given. And that is to first love, you know, first love God, love Jehovah with all your might, but secondly, to love your fellow man as much as you love Jehovah. And I always, I, I didn't know this, you know, cause I wasn't really a, a study of the Bible, you know, as a kid, you know, I really would just go and be there. But um, so what I learned about, you know, my approach to things is that I do want to follow the golden rule and the golden rule is often misquoted. It's often say, do unto others as you have them do to you. But the rule really is do to others as you will want them to do to you. And so all the times that I always take the time to try to help another person is what was done to me or what I would like to have done to me, uh, for me. And so that is what guides me, you know, is the love that we were um, asked to have for our fellow mankind. And what that brings out in us is the fruitage of the spirit, you know, to have love and joy and peace and faith and kindness, and not to focus so much on the works of the flesh because the works of the flesh is the opposite of the fruitage of the spirit. And I was reading Sherilyn Eiffel's um, editorial in the New York Times on Sunday. And it's a challenge that if uh, Trish Refo and Reggie Turner and others in leadership are still on this call, I think uh, along with this section, we have to really think about the question that she posed in her editorial, that what has happened over these last several years the lawyers have to ask themselves, where have we been? Where have we been when people were breaking down the rule of law and, and um, um, attacking the judiciary and the independence of the judiciary? I know we make our statements, but we're gonna find ourselves like we found ourselves in the 50s and other critical times where 
you know, we sat by too silently doing nothing. And it reminds you of the poem that we always hear about um, when they talk about, you know, from, from the, the, um, the, the atrocities of the, the Nazi regime where they always talk about you know, they first came for the Jews, I did nothing. Then they came for the Catholics, I did nothing. To ultimately it gets to you and there's nobody to do anything. And so I think that that is the charge that you have to think about is where were we and where will you be? Um, I think about my year as the chair of the section and it was shortly after um, uh, President Obama was elected. And you could feel in the air, you know, people were like, oh, you know, we're in a post-racial society, everything's gonna be good. And my entire year was focused on, are we really in a post-racial society? Because you could see that there was, there was already the beginnings of the turning back of the advances that people had made. So um, I leave you with that thought. I thank you all for uh, being here with me this evening uh, for the, the lovely tribute that you've given me to Angela and to the staff and to Will Schooley and to all others who I didn't call by name know that I am extremely appreciative of everything that uh, you have done to make this a special day for me and for all that you've done for me in these three and a half decades that I've been active in the ABA. Much love to all of you. Without the love. Thank you so much, Alicia. And I want to let people know that we still have time to um, engage for you to wish her well. But before we do that, I do want to thank, uh, we now have a Father Drinan Awards Committee, Alicia. <laughs> and uh, we had a lot of people that worked really hard to make this celebration very special for you. And I just want to make sure that I acknowledge them. Yes. them. And so, you know Janet, Janet Marvley Green, chair of this committee. And oh, got you. Yes. And then we have Lacey Durham, who you also know. Absolutely. And we have new members, Heather Lawson, who you will meet next week. Okay. And Lakeisha Munn Lewis. And um, one second, Lori Booker. And all of these wonderful ladies who put all kinds of time and effort into putting the video together and the book together and everything are your sorors. Okay. So I just want to make sure that I acknowledge that and um, let you know we have some, some new uh, family in the section. Yes, <laughs> so, yes. So yeah. Um, I am going to turn it over to all of you. I think at our peak, we had 105 participants. And so if there are folks on the call who want to wish Alicia well, who didn't have a chance to send in a tribute, now is the time. So. Alicia, this is Myra. I cannot <laughs> turn the camera because uh, I, I got the invite a little late. So I'm not going to. Yes, you do trouble anyone with the camera view, but I just want to say how proud I am of you. Um, I put in the chat, this is not new work for you. You've been doing this work long before ABA. That's true. Long before many of us joined in with you, i.e. me. <laughs> so I just want to say I love you. We go way back. I'm probably one of the few people I saw the family that know what the C stands for. And, uh, <laughs> I love you and I'm proud of you. Thank you, Myra. Thank you for joining. Myra and I are best friends from college. We started off as 17 years old, uh, freshmen at Georgia State University in Atlanta. Yes, we did. And she's my Sora. Hey, Sora. Hi there. <laughs> Alicia? Yes. Emma, can you hear me? Can I can, you? cousin. I wasn't sure whether I was on mute or or not, it's Mary. And you know, I could not be more proud of you. I'm always proud of you. you I've are. always been proud of you. But you're, I'm not proud of you because you're sitting here looking absolutely beautiful, but I have to comment on that. 
because you are. Thank but you. I am just so I so proud of everything that you are, everything that you've done, all that you've accomplished, and your giving heart. Um, I love you. And I have to tell you, you did bring me to tears when you were talking about your mom, because you know how I am about your mom. Yes. But anyway, I love you. I'm proud of you. And I love you too, cousin, because you know I wouldn't be a lawyer without you. <laughs> Thank you for being you. Thank you. I love you too, and I'm going to have to give you a call. All right, cousin. I love you too. All right. He's, he's the fake lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, he's, now he's a fake doctor because he's continually taking blood pressure. <laughs> like, like, that's a whole different story. <laughs> Is Steve right. Vermeil still on the call? Uh, let's see. Because Steve, Steve, uh, I had, remember I had Steve, Steve wrote the uh, biography on um, um, Justice, was it Justice Brennan? Yeah. Brennan. And um, and I had him autograph the book to Larry to say L Larry to the fake lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's gone now. But yeah, he's he's kind of moved on to another profession. <laughs> another profession. <huh>? <laughs> <laughs> Janet, thank you so much. I did not know that you were chair of the committee. I appreciate you. You are so welcome. Actually, I had a wonderful committee of sorors who worked tirelessly and put together this beautiful program for you. And I think I was, well, Lacey, me, Lacey, and Angela were the only ones that actually knew you, but they <laughs> all feel like they know you now because they've learned so much about you. And it was so much fun. I don't know why it took me so long to get to the section. But I kept trying to tell you. I know, I know, I know. But I am here <laughs> to stay. And Angela is love to hear it. Job. <laughs> she is. She's doing an outstanding job. Yes. Aww. Alicia, this is uh, this is Miles. My just... brother. Well, yes. I just wanted to say, uh, first of all, I'm glad it was a woman who said first how beautiful you look. So I can say it now, and it's not going to be uh, in, in, in inappropriate. But it's great to see you. And I, I still remember the uh, meeting you held in Memphis during your year as chair. What an incredible meeting that was. We went to the Civil Rights Museum. It was just the incredible feast you had prepared for us from all of the barbecue uh, joints in Memphis and your leadership of the section. And one of the things I remember more than anything else, you constantly reminded us what was important. We're here to fight for civil rights and social justice. Others may forget that this section can never afford to forget that. And you never let us afford to forget that. And I, and I think that spirit imbued a lot of us who came after you, and uh, we are indebted to you, and it's just so good to see you. Thank you, my brother. You know, we've had a lot of good conversations. Um, very, very uh, thankful that you joined us. Elysia? Yes. So guys, I've known Elysia for oh, about 30 yeah. years. We go way back. Uh, at the start of my legal career at Lincoln Financial. And even though I was not her soror, Elysia showed Sorry. me great, great um, hospitality. Uh, she had been at the company two years before me. And when I met her, it was as if we'd known each other for 10 years. And I put in the chat that Elysia is a great cook. And if you've ever had an opportunity to sit at her table, then you know. And as she spoke, she talked about what an amazing chef her mom was. So she got it honest, as they would say in my household. Um, but one of the incredible things about Elysia is her hospitality. She really embodies Southern hospitality. She uh, just makes everyone feel welcome. And she yeah. feels community around hospitality, around pulling people in and creating gatherings. And I'm forever blessed because I was 
a young lawyer relocating to Fort Wayne, Indiana from suburban Chicago. And there was instant family for me in Fort Wayne because Elysia was a part of my squad. So I just wanna say thank you, I salute you. And to this day, my family still considers Elysia family. And I no longer live in Fort Wayne, neither does Elysia. Uh, and I was shocked the one time my family drove to Fort Wayne to visit Elysia and Doris, who are, Doris is on here. And I live in Pennsylvania. And that's how good the connection was that they came to visit them for the weekend. And I just wanted to just stress and highlight your hospitality and your amazing and incredible warmth. So thank you. You're more than welcome. You know, I love you. <laughs> I love you too. Ron Tabak, my baseball buddy, how are you doing? You're on mute, Ron. Okay, well, I'm gonna jump in. Since, hey, since Ron is on mute, I'm jumping in. I am the legacy of this fantastic, wonderful, beautiful, and when I say fire, you are on fire, my sister. Uh, I could not be more proud. I am inspired, and I hope that I live a life that makes you proud and practice and have a career that, that adds to the legacy that you have created by all that you've poured into me personally. Um, I'm happy to be here to celebrate you. And I know this, and I know this is the culmination of a lot of pouring into others. Um, and I've been the benefit of that. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and so I love much. You. I, I love, love you too, Judge. Now I think I can talk. Yes, Ron. This is my baseball buddy. It's really an experience to go to a baseball game with Alicia and her, particularly if she brings some of her friends with her. It's really amazing. <laughs> <laughs> my friends and my family. Don't forget the family. That's right. <laughs> so I look forward to do that, forward to doing that if they ever let fans go again. Mm -hmm. So I see Lou Pritchard is on the call. Hey, Richard. You on mute? Well, Lou, I'm so glad that you joined us. I'm not sure if you're able to talk, but uh, thank you for joining this celebration. That means a lot to me. Alicia, I want to congratulate you again. It's Ray. I want to thank you for taking the time to introduce me at the uh, Spirit of Excellence Awards ceremony. I, uh, um, am, I had a feeling that I'd get to see some of the, my favorite people at your celebration. I'm glad I had that, but I'm really grateful to get to a chance to hear everybody celebrate your accomplishments and work and to, to get to know you a little bit better. Thanks again. Thank you, Ray. Oh, you made me feel like I walked on water with, with your introduction. And so I have my, my Zoom background looking like I'm walking on water. Oh! Now, Ray, this guy can dance. Oh, my. He and his wife, they cut a mean, mean rug on the dance floor. They can step. <laughs> Thank you. I couldn't pay enough money for that kind of advertisement. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, Alicia. This is Doris. I just wanted to take a minute and congratulate you on all that you do for other people. And I'm glad everyone noticed how wonderful you are, how supportive you are. And just to let you know that I love you and I can't wait until we get a chance to get together. And like Linda said, just enjoy each other again. God bless you, bless you and your family. Thank you. Thank you, Doris. Now that's my partner in crime. She's been to many ABA meetings, so. <laughs> I miss Elise. Her daughter, Roxanne Green, is on the on the call as well. Hi there. Thank you for joining. No problem. Congratulations on your award. Thank you. I'm so proud to know you and to have met you and learned that you are not just my mom's friend, but you were a friend of the family and a member of the family, honorary member who we still call cousin Elysius. <laughs> and hey, Miss Mary, I saw you on there. 
Uh, just thank you for being in my life. And as the other young lady said, pouring into me, I enjoyed all the parties that I was invited to. At first, I wasn't going to go. I'm like, I'm not going to hang out with my mom and her friends, her old lady friends. But oh my gosh, I learned how to party with old lady friends. <laughs> and I learned so much from you guys. So again, thank you. Congratulations and love you. Love you too. Thank you. <laughs> it's yeah. Mark. A grass. How are you? I am doing great, and you look wonderful. Thank um, you. Congratulations again. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you for the nice words before, but I have to say uh, you were uh, really a, a very important uh, partner through many years in the House together and during your time on the Board of Governors. Uh, we always knew we had a champion, whatever the issue might be. Uh, particularly if it was a, an issue, an IRR issue, or now a civil rights and social justice issue, uh, you were always leading the charge. And uh, I think it was always, we, we knew we, we had you in our corner, that we could count on you, that you didn't have to be persuaded to do the right thing. And I've always appreciated that, and I really, uh, I really salute you for all the great work you've done. Thanks, Mark. That, that means a lot. I appreciate that. Okay, do we have any others? Hey, Ms. Alicia, how you doing? It's Andrew Roden. Andrew, how are you? One of um, our, well, former law students, how are you doing? I'm blessed. I just want to say thank you for everything you've ever done for me uh, ever since I joined the section seven years ago as a young council member, as a law student. Mm -hmm. uh, you've always been there for me when I was in the House of Delegates trying to figure out how to do votes. You sat down, you broke down the process for me. And even as an attorney, um, when my firm was acquired a couple years ago, uh, Miss Alicia actually opened up a door opportunity to join uh, job opportunity where she's at and I'll forever be grateful for that opportunity and looking out for me for in that process. So it's a blessing to see you get this award. Um, on behalf of all the, the law students who you have mentored over the years and young lawyers, you do a tremendous job and you motivate all of us and try to be in your shoes and make a difference for those coming behind us. So thank you. Thank you so much, Andrew. So I'm so happy to see you join and I'm glad that things are going well with you. You relocated to Texas, didn't you? Yes, I did. Enjoying the snow and no power. <laughs> <laughs> are you in Houston? No, I'm in Dallas. So I'm actually Dallas. working on a um, flashlights and I'm a hot spot right now. So that's wow. why I'm where I'm at. <laughs> well, I'm feeling really honored. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Well, Alicia, I hope oh, Wait, you... Alicia. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was on mute and I was talking away. Can I just give her my, my love and congratulations? Absolutely. Alicia, this is Pamela. I've been in a standing committee doing the good work of the ABA, um, but wanted to catch you and just congratulate you for this wonderful, wonderful recognition. You are so deserving of this and so much more. And I'm just blessed that you've touched my life and my family's life. And um, that's a gift. I'll always thank the ABA for, despite all the other good works that you have done and that we have done together and that we'll do more of in the years to come. Well, Pamela, you know, I wouldn't even be sitting here, but for you. So you already know that. How did you join the kids? Well, Joel's in that room. He wanted to um, poke his head in because I've been working in this uh, at home all day with standing committee on the <laughs> judiciary. And he's like, I'll say hello. I'll say hello. Everybody's healthy. Everybody's good. Um, yeah. And um, your, your, um, the little sparkle in your eye, Rob, is busy in grad school. Oh wow, we gotta yeah. we gotta catch up. We'll catch yes. up, but today's your day and you um are a light to all of us. And um it's just it it, it blesses us and it gives us guidance. Thank you, Pam. Love you. Love you too. Say Bye. I will take care. Okay.
Do we have anyone else? Okay, well, I, I, on behalf of, of the civil rights and social justice, I just, again, want to thank everybody for joining us for this celebration uh, for Alicia. Alicia, thank you for all that you do. And uh, we hope for those of you who aren't familiar with our section, we have some in the program book um, about us, and we hope to see you at some of our events and, and uh, activities. And so on that note, I think, um, I think we will end the celebration. Again, thank you everyone, and especially to the staff and to you, Angela, and to the committee. You are very, very welcome. So, Bye-bye. Bye-bye.